What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals. Welcome to another episode of League on the Lock. Eric and Mark here with you guys for a big old all-time countdown. Today feels like it's been a little while since we've done some of these all-time rankings by roll and you know we've done these over the years and some of them are you know three four five years old and all it takes is one year really and it feels like these all-time rankings get completely shifted around depending on who won worlds just the way the the shifting sands of time tend to work and how things change over the course of a season seasons added on top of one another things can change and we have that in no shortage in any of the positions in League of Legends, but I think none other than Jungle owning it up the most compared to any of these other roles that we talk about with players coming through, becoming the peak of the role, and then all of a sudden dropping off down into a middle tier or something like that. Every once in a while, we've got a couple of these star gems that find a way to keep wowing you from this incredibly difficult and ever-changing and evolving position in League of Legends. You're only as good as your latest smite. That's that's how it goes as the jungle. The ultimate scapegoat role, whether it's in solo queue or in that pro environment. We're doing the top eight junglers of all time. And before we get to the actual list, if we extended this to top ten, the two honorable guys we got to shout out is definitely Clear Love and Dandy, who obviously Clear Love was the original LPL general, and Dandy is the innovator, the pioneer when it comes to jungling. Oh, it, it feels bad almost to have to put these guys in the honorable mention category to try and, you know, put them right up to where it's everybody else because it almost invalidates and kind of feels like a, a token type of thing about what they did in the game. And that's not fair because it absolutely deserves its own little spotlight and recognition for these guys. Clear love for me. It's one of the old guys, one of the oldest guards that you can go to in the longevity that I saw, the loyalty to his organization and how he was able to bring the fans into the seats. That's something that I'll always remember from him. And Dandy, you mentioned it, the innovator, the guy coming through with the different champions, the different ways to play them in the jungle and really explode. That was an early era type of thing. And again, when you look at the way that we see the game played today, whenever you are going for that spicy pick in the jungle, it gives me a dandy type of vibes from back in the day. And a lot of guys were emulating those vibes that Dandy was doing, whether it was a pick or a play style. Absolutely one of the early pioneers for the role. On to that actual list, we start with one of the most polarizing and, to me, disrespected world champion junglers, and that is Tien, FPX slash top esports. And he's, you know, aside from the 2019 world championship run, it's tricky because he can be so dominant domestically, pick up MVPs, but unfortunately, he's got a little bit of a debuff when it comes to international events. It's a little bit painful to bring that one up when you're talking about Tian on this type of list, but make no mistake, deserves to be on a list like this as we were going through the greatest junglers that we have seen in the game of League of Legends. Tian, for me, the specialty that he brings to the Rift throughout all of these successes for me really is the counter engage specialty. I think a lot of these times, a lot of these guys that we're going to go through on this list, you're talking about that initial engage, that first opportunity that they are taking. For me, with Tian, it's about how he's able to play once that first card goes down from the other team, whether that is the jungler or someone else making that first move, his move afterwards is the trump card for top esports for fpx what he's able to do champions like ivern sejuani even the zyra that we have seen this year have been very successful champions for him that he's been able to pilot and make work of course we all know about the lee sin throughout the world championship skin that he has got and yes world championship skin important to keep a mention of that one because as you said there's been some international whoopsies, and that is kind of the mixed bag that you get because, of course, you do have an overwhelming shining star in your international success of that world championship. But other than that, for Tien, it's a lot of whoopsies, a lot of mistakes, a lot of being exposed on the international stage by people that are pushing a, a little bit harder. But again, still, I think criminally underrated because people remember those international 
competitions a lot more than the domestic ones. But he has been one of the premier LPL junglers for the better part of half a decade. The kind of opposite of what Tien is doing is Owner, who is the hardest guy to grade on this list. Because if you were just looking at international Owner, I feel like this is an easy top three slot in for him. But... We have to remember some LCK entire splits out of owner where we've had fans screaming to replace this guy and everyone scratching their heads going, what is this guy doing? But no question when he's playing at a high level and a peak, uh, he's right up there with some of the best of all time. This is one that I think over the next couple of years, depending on what uh, career choice happens, we're really going to get to see the truth about owner and where he will find himself settling in or keep climbing on this type of list in the future. Because what we have seen from him, the results, the international things, yes, all of that screams that you'd be way higher in the type of list like this, even with a short runway that you've had so far in your career for owner. We do need to bring up some of these struggles throughout the regular season. You do need to bring up when Faker is not in the lineup, when it was Poby, the biggest difference that you could have for T1. Owner looked completely lost at that time with T1 throughout some of these struggles. So yes, you do need to kind of lower yourself down, cool things off a little bit, taking into account some of the struggles that you've seen in the regular season. That doesn't mean there also hasn't been highs of highs and successes throughout the regular season for owner of course the what was at one time a record setting split for t1 soon eclipsed by gen g uh later on but owner getting that done and then of course the way that he has leveled up at these international events and how he has dominated in that role for t1 cannot be overlooked of course we talked so many times you know again you just, we just had tn the reverse of it there's always so much pressure and so much extra value when you come through at the international events through these big series when it's on the line. And owner has been able to deliver for T1 more times than not. And as you say, as the years come in, this guy's not even 22 years old. He's definitely going to be climbing up on this list. Whether it's with T1, whether it's with a different organization, the future is still very bright uh, for this guy. Score slides into that number six spot, and I think people who are more recent fans of the scene will not be accustomed or aware of how good this guy was, but there's basically a four, probably even five-year stretch where he was maybe not the premier best jungler in the world, but the floor for this guy was like a top four, top five jungler in the world consistently time in and time out. If he just had more actual hardware and titles he would easily be in the top five of this list score is a product of the time that he played league of legends is the way that i look at what he offered what he brought to the table compared to some of these other junglers that we have on this list and some of the current you know the, the junglers that are thriving in the current era of league of legends as well and things like that score doesn't get afforded that type of luxury throughout the way that his career played out and the timing of it as you said we wish we prayed for more championships for him that would have come through and it's a simple as just you know a lucky break here a lucky break there these type of things happen and you're talking about scores a multiple time champion in the lck unfortunately we're talking about the one but he does add a couple extra to that one when if you're if you're bringing in the coach years which i think we should give a little bit of credit to that plays part into what made score so special is that brain is that general mindset that he had in the jungle and especially in that early era of league of legends one of the best ways one of the biggest ways you could separate yourself from the competition was your ability to path in the jungle which ones you would take how you would manipulate that given what this individual matchup was on the other side your your champion all these type of things and it always seemed like score was the next mastermind at figuring out exactly what needed to be happened, what type of path, where I needed to be, when I needed to gank, all of these things. Score had his hand on the pulse big time. And he always had, you know, the transition to picks like Kindred from his AD carry days where he was able to take over. When he was playing, there weren't there weren't Viegos, there weren't Gwens in the jungle that he could come and put full carry performances. Kindred was kind of it at the time. Maybe a Graves thrown in there, but it was a totally different game when he was playing. Yeah, he's like, what's this, you know, 200 years reset city that you've yeah. got going on in this game? Score is the old champions straight up, and he found a way 
to get through his jungle camps in a time faster than you in a way that left him in this type of position that made it better to gank for this and that and this. And then it all kept snowballing. He was the mastermind behind it all. And I think, unfortunately, we don't have as many successes to champion for him, but still one of the very best and one of the ones that you cannot forget about when you're going through the greatest junglers of all time. And if you want to talk specifically carry champions, carry jungler, look no further than the dude ahead of him on this list. We are talking about JDG's Kanavi. And maybe the most impressive thing uh, about him for me, you know, he's got LPL titles. He's got MVPs. He's got an MSI title. Doesn't have the world championship. But on both these JDG rosters that were underwhelming and he was far and away the star player going even to that absolutely stacked knight ruler roster even with those two kanavi was still able to shine whether his team was had zero expectations or all the way to the world he performed time and time again one of the things that i think about when you mentioned that is again you look at through regardless of what was happening with the team type of situation the last couple of times that we've had anything going on internationally right the asian games type of thing where you're slotting in for your country kanavi has always been there for south korea he has been right there alongside another player that we will of course talk about on this list that's the type of category that he puts himself into and what we have seen from kanavi you said it it's the high end it's the explosive power that he represents in the jungle to completely run away with a game on his own is what he is able to do compared to i think these other guys that we have talked about the differences on what they provide what makes them special Kanavi, he's your grand slam. He is your home run. He's the big dinger. He's the one that hits it out of the park for the team, finding a way to be the runaway threat. And I know a lot of people remember that semifinals against T1 where he maybe did have some suspect moments. Maybe owner got the better of him. But when you look at the entire body of work for Kanavi, more often than not, not only are you talking about him as the best jungler in the LPL, a lot of these splits, you were talking about him as the best overall player in a stacked region. And I think part of that plays into the big explosive power that he represents, that he brings to the table. He's taking that shot. You're trying to make the big swing. And unfortunately, in the T1 series, not in positions where that works out and all these other type of factors that can play into that one where you do get an exposure. You do look, uh, you know, silly in these type of ways in that performance. But there's a lot of other ones that we look at with Kanavi, the way that he has played. Make no mistake in going through the LPL playoffs and how he has been able to perform for his teams and drag them to these finals in certain situations. And again, the special year, I think that is the big one for me, looking back at that JDG team that did eventually struggle in that semifinal against T1. The golden year that everything that they did before that gets thrown out the way, and that's not how it's got to work. You do need to give that respect over for it. And Kanavi, a major part of what made that engine go. And again, with star, with star power in Ruler and Knight, we were still talking about Kanavi time and time again. Uh, the only Western guy on this list, and it's not even close, who's second in terms of Western junglers, of course, it is Yankos. Usually, you're talking West and you say, yeah, but they don't really have the international results. Well, how about a four-time world semifinalist and an MSI champion? There are like two to three players in the West you can talk about, and most of them are on G2, that have ever reached those accolades. You combine that with the near decade-long career that this guy has had been at the absolute forefront. He's got the MVPs, hands down, best jungler out of Europe. The only guy that I think, well, actually, maybe there's a small handful of guys here that we can uh, pick on that have been around since scores time in League of Legends. Yankos, one of the ones that we can throw in. Only one of these well. junglers that we're talking about, for sure. Yes, the longevity of his career. And you laid it out, talking about those four semifinal appearances at Worlds. That normally, you know, might sound like kind of a bit of a, oh, that's not that impressive. We just had Faker. Faker's won five world championships. What's going on here? You got to understand, staying in these Western regions, playing for uh, the teams that Yankos has, and to have that type of record at an international event, that is noteworthy. That is something to recognize and say, there is nobody close to that type of record in the Western scene and what you've been able to accomplish. 
the longevity of his career and especially you go to some of those peak years that he was able to have and how much of a menace he was in the european region Yankos has got to be on this type of list. I think a lot of people, you know, will vary on how high they want to put him or how low they want to, you know, disrespect him because of being from the Western region, because of these type of things. Not here. We are celebrating it. Yankos, welcome into the greatest junglers of all time. And listen, 2019, 2020, when you're talking about him at his peak, you were comparing him with whoever was best in the world at times uh, in the jungle, whether Tarzan, Clint, whoever it was, Tien, at those moments, Yankos was right there. People were even giving him the edge. So I won't stand for the slander that he always chokes against the best uh, Eastern junglers. Okay, the FPX one, sure, Tien got the better up of there, but there were handfuls of times where Yankos was showing up and putting out against the best of the best. Speaking of best of the best, we're into the top three, and <sighs> Yankos, you know, no real championship. Kanavi, no real championship, but he got there. How about a guy with three stars on his jacket? The original Robin to Faker's Batman. Bengi still, as the times change, seems safe in the conversation as one of the best strugglers of all time. Oh, the classic Bengi. Oh, it's... He's got a special spot, a spot right beside my heart, what he was able to do with SKT in those early years. Yes, you said it. The right hand of God himself, Faker in the mid lane, always was able to rely on Bengi, whether it was a big moment or a small moment. Bengi was able to deliver for this T1 lineup. Of course, so many special historic moments that you can go back to through their world championship run. But for the biggest one for me, again, is that consistency. Never, never was the one necessarily stealing the show. That wasn't how SKT operated back in those early days. But he certainly was somebody that was reliable for this team. It was, whether it was someone, you know, as low down in the expectations that you'd be fighting, or it was that top table type of matchup. You could rely on Bengi, his performance, his stability that he would bring to the team. And there's no question that the consistency that he provided in those early eras combined with the high power that you had with just the raw mechanical skill of T1, that's where you get the original SKT dynasty. Maybe the only guy comparably or more clutch than Faker was Bengi. You know, a guy subbing in down 2-1, playing a pick he's never played before. That's obviously the highlight but so many moments in the biggest games it was bangy stepping up for skt delivering exactly what they needed a guy who's very familiar with bangy the guy who was getting styled on down 2-1 in that rocks tiger series is peanut and obviously bangy has been retired for a long time and peanut continues to chug along even though he doesn't have that world's title he's an msi finalist he's been to worlds with five different organizations and the transition from being that young jungle mechanical god into the veteran shot caller on tank duty has been absolutely seamless out of him this is one of the most incredible stories that we get to tell from a player in the jungle peanut one of my all-time favorites covering over the course of his career and what he has been able to do and succeed. And yes, I think this is one of those ones where there is an elusive world championship trophy that we would love to add to the cabinet to that resume when you talk about what Peanut has done. But the longevity of his career, the ability to succeed at the ultra high level, have that high performance, big wow early in your career, the least sin games that we saw from him. And this transition over time throughout all of his journeys through the LPL back into the LCK, we have seen him evolve and mature into the jungle captain, the strategist that he is now for Hanwha Life, the champions that he's playing. You think that we're talking about, again, go back to the early eras, Rocks Tiger, T1, Lee Sin, Peanut. And you're telling me that I'm telling you it's an insta ban on Ivern Maokai, the on poppy Sky? god. <laughs> That's what Peanut has become. He has absolutely grown and evolved over the course of his career. He's played on top level teams. He's played on middle to low level teams throughout it, and found success. Found a way to be that ever smiling star in the jungle. And I'm so happy that we get to talk about his career. 
he might, uh, you know, by the end of it, try and just play for every LCK team that's ever existed. <laughs> he's, he's passed like half of them at this point, and some of them he's gone back for a second stint when you're talking about uh, squads like Gen G. But yeah, longevity, peak performance, it's all there on the career for Peanut. It's just not quite as there as the number one dog on this list. Obviously, he's got not just a world championship, but he was the MVP. We're talking about Canyon, who ever since he became that starter with Dom Juan, he has perennially been in the conversation or just undisputably the best jungler in the world. 2020 to 2021, when Dom Juan had back-to-back finals, he was the best jungler in the world. Even during these massive slumps that D-plus would have, the question was, is Canyon popping off? Win. Is Canyon not popping off? Loss. That, that was it. Think about all of the names that we have gone through already on this list, right? Talking about them. What made them special? What was the big draw, the excitement about them? All these type of things. And when you check in on where you would put them, how you would rank them throughout all the times in their career, a lot of these guys, they're going number one, and then maybe they're being number seven. And then the next year, they're number number four. And then all of a sudden, back to number eight. And there's some ups and downs throughout the courses of their career in this period, in this you know uh, zone of, of what we're talking about, the excellency in junglers. For someone like Canyon, he has hung out in this top three for this type of list and hasn't dropped any lower since his debut in the LCK. And that type of consistency at this high of a level, this impressive of a performance is unheard of in the lck and abroad that is what canyon has brought to the table with his ultra level of performance that we have seen and yes the last two maybe three years have been somewhat questionable people were starting to doubt you could still see it here and there of course and then we had the international appearances with um the korean team at the asian games and you would talk about how he played canyon You had to look at the results separate because you had to understand that he was doing all he could. And now this year on Gen G, yeah, everyone's gotten a quite a healthy dosage and a realization that Canyon has been there and he has been this high level monster all along. Just struggled down a couple years with the rest of uh, D plus key. There's a reason professional junglers are still looking to him for pathing, for what picks are coming up. It's because he is the tippity top when you look at all-time junglers, peak performance. But that is it today 